Hello, and God bless you. I don't say good morning or good afternoon because I really don't know when you're going to be watching this. Uh, Remington and the folks up at Christchurch have gone uh, to great need to help us out on this uh, attempt to be together, to have some moments together for prayer and reflection um, at your convenience. And we hope that you'll be able to tune into this and find something. It doesn't replace what we're missing on Sunday morning, that's for sure. Uh, I've I'm really reminded at this time how much that fellowship means to me. Just being together uh, and seeing each other and touching uh, has such power. And we miss it, and I suppose you do. In the meantime, we want to experiment with new ways to communicate and new ways which we can uh, share and be a community. So for that, I would like your input. Feel free to uh, uh, send me an email or anybody up at Christ Church and tell us what's on your mind. Uh, in the meantime, though, I encourage that you take a chance on Sunday mornings at 9 o'clock to go to the live broadcast at Christ Church, which will give you a good experience, you know, hymns and music and all that good stuff. Uh, in the meantime, we'll take this opportunity, at least weekly, to have kind of a, a fireside chat, to just be able to relax and go over the gospel for the week and some prayers and whatever concerns come up. We can be, I want to be very flexible about this. Um, the, the Gospel for this week, in fact, invites a lot of flexibility. The ninth chapter of the Gospel of John is so full, you could spend an entire uh, lifetime just working on that. And we try to condense it a bit, but still, it's large and fulsome. It is all about the light and darkness, great major themes of all religion, uh, and especially it is a recapitulation of the prologue of John, uh, of light and darkness, have I am the light of the world. And Jesus is saying now in narrative way uh, to the man born blind what he said to the whole um, group of saying that I am the light of the world. The, the concept of the, the story of the man born blind is fascinating. And blindness was rampant then as is now. The trouble is in those days they often associated with sinfulness or something went wrong. Uh, and that's why they asked Jesus, who sinned, this man or his parents, that is born blind? And Jesus, right off the bat, starts rocking the boat and says, that's not the case at all. You're going to miss the point. The point is that God's glory can be seen in this and that in all of these disabilities and brokenness, we can find God's glory and God's power at work. The whole story, of course, of light and darkness, blindness and sight, uh, are metaphors. Uh, metaphors, of course, for believing. Uh, Jesus says, I am the light of the world, and I want you to see that. See me, see this light. Let this light enlighten you and give you insight. The whole motif of sight, lack of sight, insight, understanding, uh, is true in lots of our general life, but especially in our, in our religious life. We talk about getting it. We want people to get it, to see it. Don't you see what we're talking about. So this whole business about the man born blind gives us plenty of opportunity to think about seeing and, and not seeing. And I'm going to read the part of the gospel that's selected for Sunday uh, for us just to chat about for a little bit. Um, but first, I'd like, to, uh, I'd like to start with a prayer. All right, let, let's pray together. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who set the solitary in families, we commend to your continual care the homes in which your people dwell. Put far from them, we beseech you, from every bit of root of bitterness, the desire of vainglory and the pride of life. Fill them with faith, virtue, knowledge, temperance, patience, godliness. Knit together in constant affection those who in holy wedlock have been made one flesh, turn the hearts of the parents to the children, and the hearts of the children to the parents, and so enkindle fervent charity among us all, that we may evermore be kindly affectioned to one another through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now, the gospel for the day, taken from the ninth chapter of John's gospel, uh, is in the following way. As Jesus walked along, 
he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither this man nor his parents sinned. He was born blind so that God's works might be revealed in him. We must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had said this, he spat on the ground and made mud with the saliva and spread the mud on the man's eyes, saying to him, Go, wash in the pool of Siloam, which means scent. Then he went and washed and came back able to see. The neighbors and those who had seen him before as a beggar began to ask, Is this not the man who used to sit and beg? Some were saying, Is he? Others were saying, No, no, but someone like him. He kept saying, I am the man. But they kept asking him, Then how were your eyes opened? He answered, The man called Jesus made mud, spread it on my eyes, and said to me, Go to Siloam and wash. Then I went and washed and received my sight. They said to him, Where is he? He said, I do not know. They brought the Pharisees, they brought to the Pharisees the man who had formerly been blind, and they drove him out. Jesus heard that they had driven him out, and when he found him, he said, do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered, And who is he, sir? Tell me, so that I may believe in him. Jesus said to him, You have seen him, and the one speaking with you is he. He said, Lord, I believe, and he worshipped him. Jesus said, I came into the world for judgment, that those who do not see may see, and those who do see may become blind. Some of the Pharisees near him heard this and said to him, Surely we are not blind, are we? And Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you would not have sinned. But now you say, We see. Your sin remains. The Gospel of the Lord. An enormous amount of sort of back and forth and even confusion uh, around seeing and not seeing. But the basic thrust of this is that seeing has to do with believing. It's like that old phrase we have, seeing is believing. And in this case, it certainly is. Jesus wants us to be able to see his works and to see what's going on that we may believe. The fact of blindness was, was rampant and all over the place, and I don't think it was what was really concerning him so much as our seeing. In other words, the sight and insight that we have in our faith life is far more, far more important. That uh, we, are, we are given an opportunity uh, to, to live into this story as we think it and go through it over and over again. Lent is a great time to reflect on these things, and particularly this time of, of enforced idleness, so to speak, when we can't come together, we can't, we can't get gussied up and come off and, and hang out together for a while so we can take extra time to sp spend time reading and thinking uh, about these really important matters to us and to John. The ninth chapter about seeing and believing is of critical importance for everything we do. I think perhaps day after day we can be uh, aware of how Jesus wants us to be no longer unseeing but aware, seeing, believing in him, but also aware of the needs of others, not, not unseeing to suffering and need around us. He wants us to see injustice and wrongdoing where it exists so that we may respond. He wants to open our hearts and our minds to understand opportunities to serve one another and to serve him in people. And finally, I think we want to see God's hand at work in the world about us. That's a prayer we often use, but it has to do with that whole concept of seeing and believing. Seeing when we once did not see, seeing because Jesus gives us sight, gives us insight, 
and calls us into these awarenesses and to this understanding that we may be responsive. And that we can do something about it. We can go away from the pool of Siloam ready to serve, ready to see with new eyes and serve with a new heart. And may God bless you as you try this and work about it. So let's, let's know how this works. Let me know what you think about it. Let me know what you'd like to talk about in these few minutes we can have. And we'll see what we can do uh, to find creative ways um, out of this. They say new occasions teach new duties. And in this time of, of disrupted worship together, let's find new ways to be a community and to value one another. So God bless you in all that you do this week.